Hey you, sitting on your bed, playing hacks that you might dread, would you play me? Yes, Decay of the Fangs, I will. Anyway, let's do this. So, last episode, we ended up on the Western Isles, from the Dread Isle. Uh, I, I assumed to flee the whole shenanigans that was going on in... Uh, the ending of Fire Emblem 7, where Elliewood and co. were kicking ass on the Dread Isle. And uh, we came across these dudes who, ha ha who just so happened to have a lot of money. And their leader is Stubblebeard Mohawk Man. I will continue to name him that because I love that name. And uh, one of their dudes decided to help us because he's a complete moron. Duh, left or right. Wow. <laughs> Leave it to Luke to just ruin stuff. Why'd you hit him? Chadwick's the one who pissed you off. God. This game really likes to make butt monkeys out of its characters. How's this guy so stupid and yet knows all this shit? Yeah, uh, I've actually, like, seen this cutscene before. What happens is that Chadwick spawns a lockpick. I think the reason why I didn't show there... Excuse me. Is because it didn't want me to, to have another one. Good design right there. Why do you need that coin? Wasn't it, like, counterfeit? Yes, the boss has lost his shit. <laughs> I love some of the blunt dialogue some of these characters have. <laughs> Let's just go and get our shit wrecked. Wow. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, so I already did the preparation stuffs. I'm not going to be using these dudes. Actually, uh, can I sell this stuff? Yeah, I can. Oh yeah, and, uh... That redhead guy is our merchant manager guy. Anyway, I'm pretty much all set. Let's do this. Let's deploy Jacob. Oh, hey, it's Bot of the Beast. Looks like he's down on his luck. Jesus Christ, this guy's wordy. Okay, I did not know that I probably need Luke to recruit this guy. Oh, there's Bada. Holy crap. Killer X. This guy might actually be good. Okay, gotta quickly switch my stuff up. And now for post-production, because the live footage was awful. Heck. Alright, so, first thing you gotta know about this chapter is you need to bring Luke with you. Why? Well, look at this right here! Yeah, just look at the text here and you'll know exactly what I mean. I mean, he's commenting- he's commenting directly on what Luke just did. The whole tearing down wall thing. Also, my god, Bada. 
this, like, something about this dialogue doesn't feel natural. Like, that seems to be a, a reoccurring thing I'm noticing about this hack, is that as I get further into it, the dialogue's starting to feel more fourth wally and, uh, like, really blatant and lacking in subtlety. Like, again, that whole Bada dialogue, it's like, oh man, I bet the guy who broke down the walls could, re could recruit me, but I suck at life. It's like, come on, man. Show a little more realism, you know? I don't think a person would speak out loud like that, but... I, I mean, okay. Lots of Fire Emblem games do it, but... It, it, it tends to feel a lot more natural. Like, for example, um, Guy's conversation that hints to you, you being able to recruit him in Fire Emblem 7. He first talks about a talks to a dude, and he's like, Ah, I gotta do this, or else I'm gonna be screwed. Man, something, something, something. Matthew can recruit me. Actually, you know what? That doesn't sound very subtle at all, either. Um, well... I guess, I guess the point I'm trying to make is that I, it's kind of hard to be subtle about your dialogue and, and realistic while at the same time hinting directly at what you're supposed to do. So, you know, I guess eventually somebody may be able to figure out a way. Or you could do what FE8 did and not hint at it at all, a la recruiting Marissa in that one chapter where Ephraim gets off the boat. How the hell are you supposed to know that you have to use Ewan? Like, that's just so dumb. But anyway, enough enough about other Fire Emblem games. Let's talk about this chapter. Honestly, this chapter reminds me a lot about that one chapter. I think it's called Whereabouts Unknown. It's from Fire Emblem 7. It's the one where you... It's the one right after you get Lin. And, you know, it's basically just a, a standard castle path to the throne kind of thing. Um, this, this one's a bit more linear, I, I admit, and the chests are placed in kind of ways I don't like. Like, they're, they're placed right after the boss, so you have to absolutely waste turns in order to get them. I just kind of feel like the uh, layout of this map could have been more optimized, for lack of a better word. But then again, I did speak to Camtech about Fire Emblem level design and, and how he feels that, you know, it's a good idea that some stuff requires you to shave off turns because LTCers are all like, yeah, now I have to consider my options to help me shave down turns. Hello, Mom. I'm doing a commentary in your living room. But, well, family room, whatever. Any yes, yes, what the hell. Okay, so anyway... What else do I have to say about this chapter? I think one of the reasons... Like, you might notice that there's bishops in this chapter, as opposed to, like... Y you know, y you think to yourself, why didn't he just use a cleric or priest? Well, here's a fun fact about Fire Emblem 7 for you. It does not actually have a priest class. It only has a cleric. And, I, and, I, and I'm guessing the guy who made this, Mario Bro, was all like, Ah, importing classes from other games, too hard. So he just decided to replace them with bishops, which, you know, is beneficial to me, because that means that when I feed kills to my dudes, they get lots more experience. But, you know, stuff. Anyway, I, throughout this chapter, I, m I made an effort to train up Mikhail. I don't know why, because uh, Myrmidons are notoriously not a very good class, mainly because they're locked to a weapon that lacks a 1-2 range to it. But, you know, I like, I like Myrmidons. And plus, Mikhail, despite his rather questionable logic towards being recruited and stuff... Oh, here's a Pegasus check who's blind. Um, despite his rather questionable business decisions, I feel compelled to use him. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the fact that he has the only good portrait in the game. So yeah, this chick literally just shows up out of nowhere. And I just thought to myself, okay, let's find out who recruits her. And literally the first person... And, and not only that, not just the first person, but the person I least expected to be able to recruit her happens to be able to recruit her. I'm pretty sure Chadwick could do it too, but I don't want to experiment. Anyway, this chick, totally not a splice of that one Fire Emblem 6 boss. Though I do approve of the, um, the Cyclops band thing. 
but how the hell does she do anything in combat is what I want to know. Naturally, if you have the in, if you don't have the ability to see, you're not gonna do very well in combat. You know what I mean? I mean it's fairly easy to comprehend, I'm sure. But uh, anyway, back to business. So because I'm a dumbass, I moved Chag Chadwick over to take that chest over there. The the fun thing is that despite the cutscene originally making me spawn a lockpick, apparently it's actually just the chest key or something along the lines of that, and anybody can use it. And here I thought, oh, Ch only Chadwick can use it, so I so I literally just had him just go for the chests on his own. Kind of bites me in... It, it, well, it kind of bites me in the ass, but then, like, later on I figure, it, I figure out that I can use the chest key with other characters, and I take advantage of that. The rest, the rest of this chapter is fairly uneventful. Nothing really interesting going on. It's mainly just recruiting Bada, beating the boss, which I did with Mikhail, and he literally one-rounded the, the dude. Sorry, bad English. Um, and then getting all the chests, which, thankfully, one of them has a Nosferatu for, for Chadwick, because uh, I'm not sure if I showed it in this video, but... Chadwick has, like, four durability left on his Flux Tome. I, sh I really should have thought about getting him another Flux from the shop. But, thankfully, the Nosferatu was there to save the day. So, anyway, here's the conversation between Luke and Bada. I just... Some of the dialogue in this game... This is a perfect example of the dialogue just not feeling natural. It really doesn't feel like these two would actually talk to each other. I mean, okay, Bada was like, oh, he tore down that big wall. Man, I wish I could be like him. But, like, even then, you would really not expect them to talk. Like, in a, in a realistic scenario. Oh, oh, also, check this out. Green-haired ninja bitch cut me down. Who the hell says that? Oh, I, I, I forgot to mention, he calls her a hot green-haired ninja bitch. Obviously referring to Lin. For those of you who uh, haven't played Fire Emblem 7 at least 15 times, I certainly might not have. But uh, I'll leave that up to your interpretation, viewer. Anyway. <laughs> I just glanced at my mom to see if she was laughing at that. Anyway. Bada kinda... I looked at his stats and was like, well, he doesn't look like he's gonna be that promising. But what I do remember about him is that he has supports with Luke and... Uh, well, since it's Bot of the Beast, we have to learn about him, so I might actually consider using him. But I didn't actually use him at all in this chapter. Most of the chapter can be a, can be credited to Arnold, Mikhail, and Keegan. Even though I don't like Keegan very much because he's just a boring character who has one personality trait. So let's see, what else do I gotta say about this chapter? Recording it was a bitch. I, uh, I tried to use the built-in Visual Boy Advance recorder thing. Oh, here's this guy. Stubblebeard Mohawk Man. Oh man, he's gonna break us? I beg to differ. Can't believe this guy just got killed by a salesman. Can you, th can, can you uh, imagine that? I could have uh, said that in a much more flowy way. But, um, yeah. Mikhail started out kind of mediocre, but his growths growth are actually pretty good. Plus, giving him that energy ring, I think, was a good decision. Though, in hindsight, I think Keegan's an even better decision. Simply because Keegan already does a lot of damage. But, anyway. The thieves in this chapter, they do go after the chests. I don't, uh, but I think I've mentioned this before. Thief AI in Fire Emblem 7 is kind of hard to hack. And as a result, a lot of thieves just walk up to a chest, steal from it, and then just stay there. Unless there's more chests to go through, in which they'll do those and then stay in place. It's not very, uh, it's not very good. It unfortunately makes it easy to, um, steal from them. Anyway, let's see what else. Uh, I don't know if that was, that problem was actually fixed in this hack. There are some people who will actually, like, use eventing to force the thief to go away, but I'm not sure if that's what Mario Bro did here. But, regardless, even if he did manage to do it, it's kind of too late because these thieves are going to die no matter what. I managed to get here fast enough so that they wouldn't be able to steal the chests. 
Well, that one did, but, like, now it's takeable because it's all green and glowy and... Oh! Also, it really pisses me off that Arnold missed with that Steel Lance the first time. That would have... That would have saved, the, saved me some trouble. Or would it? Come to think of it, I think it saved more time letting that thief steal from that chest because I don't think I had any, had any chest keys on me. Oh, well. Either way. Chapter's almost done. Thank you... someone. We, get, we got a Thunder Tome. Hooray. So, from these chests, we got Nosferatu, Thunder, Goddess Icon, Amend, right there. And what is this last one? A red gem. Okay. Uh, note to self. Please, dear God, get a Flux Tome for Chadwick. And maybe shop for some other shit. So anyway, that's pretty much the chapter. Because I'm ending cutscenes. And this is our little cutscene where we establish that Chadwick's not such a bad guy. You know, even though he's done a couple of questionable things, right here it's like, maybe he is human after all. Do, 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 do. Right here. Hold on, damn it. Jacob, are you going to be okay? Even though I beat the shit out of you numerous times to force you to obey me. But, you know, I'm still concerned about you because I'm not completely douchey. Which I'm inclined to believe. I mean, the only reason why I kicked the shit out of Jacob is because he wanted to uh, make sure he won and stuff and, and got the gold, you know. He, he ultimately has the future of the Black Fang in mind, so there you go. Anyway, that's the end of the chapter. Thank you for watching. Marky Joe 1990 is going away to, to have a vacation in the family room.